Hello, beautiful people. Welcome again to class. This week we are going to be exploring, we're going to be opening the hips and uh, we're going to be exploring the variations of pigeon pose. If you have a bl your blocks, again, I recommend you keep them close. Maybe one on each side of your mat if you have one. So let's get started. Have a great class, everybody. So to start, I'm just going to go into child's pose. So you can come on to all fours gently. You can open your knees about hip width. However, if you feel like exploring maybe a little wider stance so that your belly sort of falls between your knees, you can also do that. Stretch your arms forward. Make sure that your elbows don't touch the mat. So this is sort of a more active awakening of the body. You can close your eyes here. And as you're stretching the fingertips out, just bring the attention towards your breath. And begin establishing a calm and steady rhythm of breath through the nose. And as you're doing this, on the inhales, take anything that may be preoccupying you or worrying you, inhale it. And as you exhale, just let it go. And let's allow these next 60 minutes to be exclusively for ourselves, for our well-being. So maybe your, your, um, your, your hips, your buttocks aren't quite touching your heels. If that's the case, that's fine. Just try and really relax. Often that's the key to allowing the body to open. Feel as though your chest, you're just sort of opening your chest towards the mat. And with your upper body, your arms, as you're pulling your fingertips as far away from your head as possible, you're also pulling your shoulders as far away possible from your ears. So it's sort of like an antagonistic movement. And make sure that you're spreading your shoulder blades apart from one another. Turning the inner armpits towards your face. Imagining you're turning your inner elbows towards the ceiling. And this sensation here that you're experiencing in this child's pose is very similar um, to the sensation to the position of the arms in downward facing dog. So just keep that in mind. Sometimes we can use the more passive postures to sort of um, allow us to realize how we should be positioning our bodies in the more active postures. And so your forehead, the point just between your two eyebrows should be touching the mat, maybe the tip of your nose. Okay. Now, let's just navigate our way, the upper body towards the right. See if maybe you can lie your belly onto your right thigh. And then make sure that your hands are still shoulder width, fingers spread out. And again, uh, we don't want to comprom compromise uh, alignment over depth. Okay, so your left butt cheek should still be touching your left heel. And if that's not the case, maybe you just want to do a little bit less. Feel as though you're stretching your left arm a little bit further than your right arm. And as you exhale, just press that left bum into the left heel and feel the stretch in the left side of the upper body, at the left part of your thorax, your chest, maybe in your hip. And again, we're breathing through the nose. Make sure the elbows are not touching the mat. It's active and you're always rolling the shoulder blades away from one another. So you might feel like you're already working your shoulders here. It's very good work. 
So just gently, you know, waking up the body. Take this opportunity to really take some nice breaths in, oxygenating the body, the mind, and the spirit. Yeah, we are all those things. So it's important to take care of all those three things. You know, if one thing is not taken care of, the mind isn't feeling steady, you know, it affects the other aspects of the body. So it's important to take a look at our health you know, as a, in a holistic way, not just physically or not just mentally or just spiritually, emotionally, you know, those, all those things are connected. Great. Now let's walk our hands and our upper body towards the left. See again if your belly can maybe rest on your left thigh here. And as you're exhaling, pressing that right bum cheek onto your right heel, feeling the stretch in the right side of the upper body, maybe all the way down to your hip, moving the shoulder blades away from another, one another, pressing the, the shoulders away from the ears. Feeling that nice opening in the shoulders. Okay. And let's gently make our way back to center. And come up onto all fours. Make sure your knees are directly below your hips. Hip width. On an inhale, lift the right arm up to the sky. And on an exhale, weave your right arm below your left shoulder. Your palm of your hand should be facing upward. You can leave your left hand on the mat or you can bring your left hand on the top of your right hand in sort of prayer position. So this is a nice twist for the upper body. Nice stretch for the shoulder as well. So open your left shoulder upwards. Breathe through the nose. You can stay here or with your left hand, see if you can reach all the way back and maybe grab your inner right thigh. And by doing that, that will just give you a little bit of extra leverage to get some extra twisting in. Try to keep your hips as parallel as possible to the floor. Take one last deep inhale. And as you exhale, just release. Bring the left hand front just above your left shoulder. Inhale, come back onto all fours and exhale here. On the next inhale, let's do the other side. So lift the left arm up towards the sky as high as possible, following your hand with your eyes. And as you exhale, weave your left arm below your right shoulder, bringing your left shoulder as far as possible so that one day maybe your, both your shoulders can be perfectly perpendicular to the floor. And again, if you kept your hand on the mat on the other side, do the same here. And if not, just bring your hands into prayer position and already you can feel that you're, you're able to push gently into your hands to sort of open up the upper spine. Mm -hmm. I'm taking a nice inhale here. Breathing into where you feel some tension. On your next inhale, if you did that on the other side, lift your right hand up this time. May try to see if you can get it all the way around into your inner right thigh this time. Good. Inhale here. Open the shoulders one last time. And as you exhale, bring the right hand on the mat 
of your right shoulder and back onto all fours. Okay, let's do three breaths in cat and cow. Make sure your wrists are directly below your shoulders, hips beyond, uh, just beyond, above your knees. Inhale. As you exhale, tuck your chin in, round the back, bring the tailbone towards the mat, suck your belly in, look towards your belly button, shoulder blades away from one another. Inhale, look up, roll the shoulders up and back, push the chest towards the mat, head up, tailbone towards the sky. Exhale, chin to the chest, Round the, the upper and lower spine, tailbone towards the mat, look towards your belly button. Inhale, roll the shoulders up and back, tailbone, eyes up. One last time, exhale. Tuck the chin in, round the back, suck the belly in, tailbone towards the ground, shoulders away from one another. Inhale, look up. Roll the shoulders up and back, tailbone towards the sky, chest up, and exhale, come back into neutral. Good. Tuck the toes in. Inhale, as you lift the hips up as high as you can, go on the tips of your finger, of your, uh, of your feet, okay? And as you exhale, see if you can let those heels go down towards the mat. So we're in our first downward dog. Thighs contracted. You should feel the rotulas lifting up. Tailbone pointing towards the sky. Suck the belly in. Learn to breathe through the nose as you're sucking your belly in, okay? So this is one of the bandhas, as they call in yoga. So we're working on the concept that energy is very easy to lose <laughs> and very hard to kind of accumulate in the body and maintain it there. And by contracting certain areas, we are promoting this, the energy to come in and to stay into the body. And one of the bandhas here, Udhyana Bandha is near your navel. So you want to feel like that's sort of sucked in, tucked in towards your spine. The other one is Mula Bandha. And we can talk about that one later at another time. Okay. Take your right hand and see if you can grab your outer left ankle. So twisting. Press into that left hand. So we're doing a twist, arm balancing on one hand. Make sure your left shoulder does not shrug upwards. You're still moving your shoulder away from your ear. Inhale here. As you exhale, bring the right hand back into downward facing dog. And on your and next inhale, let's do the opposite side. So left hand grabbing your outer right ankle. Twisting to the other side. One last inhale here, and exhale to downward facing dog. Now let's slowly walk our feet towards the top of the mat. Feet hip width, and on the exhale, just let the upper body relax towards the ground. You can leave your arms relaxed or grab your elbows. You can always explore, you know, different variations of this forward flexion, um, do what feels good for you. So again, with your feet, with your legs, you can make a slight bend in the knees if the stretch is too intense in the back side of the legs. Or if you feel good, you can always extend the legs, but be wary of not being your, bringing your hips too much far back. You should have your hips right above your ankle, so that means bringing more weight into the metatarsis of the feet at the front part of the feet. So it's always about thinking about all these little things and by moving slowly 
and in these hatha classes by really taking the time to um, explain all the details within each posture really allows you to be in the body rather than in the mind and um, getting the most benefits out of the practice. Okay, let's let go of the elbows, micro bend the knees, contract your lower abdomen, and on an inhale, come back up, rolling out the spine, one vertebrae at a time. Shoulders relaxed. Shoulders, and then head comes up last. Good. Bring the feet together. We're gonna work off of Surya Namaskara. Up. Just take a second to look at your alignment. Heels directly below your hips. Belly in, forward tilt of the hips. Shoulders back, arms relaxed to the sides. Shoulders down, chin towards the chest. Exhale through the nose. Inhale, stretch the arms up on each side. Look up, palms together. Exhale, bend from the hips. Contract the lower abdomen, keep the back straight. Go all the way down, hands on each side of the feet, forehead to the shins. Inhale, flat back, shoulders up. Exhale, plant the hands beside the feet and walk back into plank. Inhale here. On the exhale, for the first round, let's just go all the way down. So bend the elbows, keep them close to the body. Chest comes down first, then tops of the feet on the mat. Roll the shoulders back. Inhale up into a cobra. And then look up. Keeping the tips and the pubic bone touching the mat. Exhale, tuck the toes. You can transition through the knees and come up into a downward facing dog. Inhale, lift the right foot up, left leg up. Hips parallel to the floor. So in three-legged downward dog. Stretching both legs, so the both legs are perfectly extending, trying to make a perfect line between the tip of your right foot to the tip of your fingers. Look towards your navel. Keep your hips parallel to the mat. Inhale, stretch up one last time. Exhale, bring the right foot down. On the next inhale, stretch the left leg up. And again, both legs can be extended, thighs contracted, hips parallel to the floor. Tuck the, na the navel towards the spine, towards your belly button, hips and shoulders parallel to the ground. Inhale, stretch the left leg up one last time. And on the exhale, press the left foot onto the mat, back into downward facing dog. Inhale, look forward, try to take one step between the feet, make a flat back, shoulders up. Exhale, hands down, forehead to the shins. Inhale, chest leading the movement, come up with a straight spine, arms up, palms together, look up, exhale, bring the arms down in Namaskara, and then to each side of the body. Let's repeat. Inhale, stretch the arms up, look up, maybe making a slight back bend, palms together, look up, exhale, bend from the hips, spreading and stretching the arms, then putting them on each side of the feet on the mat, forehead to the shins. Inhale, flat back, shoulder blades together here. Exhale, plant the hands and go back, but switching the feet. So left foot first, then right into plank. From plank, let's pivot the heels to the left. Bring the right arm up to the sky. So side plank, make sure your shoulder is directly above your wrist. Press those fingers into the mat so that you don't have the weight exclusively in the base of your wrist. If this feels comfortable, you can see if you can lift your right foot off of the mat. And from here, try to bring your right foot behind as high as possible onto the floor. Now push into your left foot and see if you can open the chest, bring the arms up, right arm up and over, palm facing the ground. So really just opening the upper spine here. Take an inhale, chest up. Exhale, let's reverse it. 
side plank, right foot up, then right foot down, right hand on the mat, back into push-up position. Now let's pivot the heels to the right. Other side. Left hang, hand up into side plank. Make sure your hips aren't down low, eh? so you're pushing those hips up, shoulder directly above the wrist, adjust accordingly, press all your fingers into the mat. From here, let's bring that left foot up. Very good. And then see if you can step it on the mat as high as possible. Now push into both of the feet, push the chest up, bring the left arm up and over, and look towards the palm of your hand, which is facing the ground. So we're reversing our dog. We've just gone into it in a different way. Hopefully helping you to understand how that can be done and how to work your way towards that when we're flipping from downward facing dog. Inhale here. And as you exhale, let's reverse it. So taking your time, try to bring your left foot back up and then bringing it forward on the mat left hand on the mat, back into plank. Inhale here. On the exhale, you can go all the way down or stop halfway. Whatever you're doing, make sure your shoulders are really hugging the body. Inhale, push forward into a cobra or an upward facing dog, shoulders back. Exhale, tuck the toes and go into your downward facing dog. Okay. So from here, we're gonna do it again, what we just did flipping the dog, but from the downward dog position, okay? So just so that you can see the variations. Inhale, stretch the right leg up. Bend the knee and open the hip. So you're stacking the right hip on top of the left hip. Make sure your left foot stays parallel to the long edge of your mat. And from here, the idea is to really Work your way towards bringing that right foot as high as possible onto the floor. And from here, you can see that you're bringing your chest up, your right arm up and over with the palm facing the ground. And we're in the same position as we were seconds before while we were working to this, towards this position from, from push-up position, okay? So inhale here, push your chest up, hips up. And as you exhale, bring the right arm back Push back up into three-legged downward dog. And exhale, bring the right foot down into downward facing dog. Good work, everybody. Let's do the other side. Inhale, stretch the left leg up, bend the knee, open the hips. So this time your left hip stacked directly above your right hip. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then you can just Trust yourself, you know, so try to bring your left foot as far up on the floor as you can. And then you just push into both feet, open the chest, look towards your left hand, which is now stretching beyond your, your head, palm facing the mat. Inhale, push up towards the chest, your chest towards the sky. One last time, and as you exhale, turn over, left hand on the mat. Bring left leg up into three-legged downward dog and exhale back into downward facing dog. Mm -hmm. You can inhale here once through the nose and then through the mouth, exhale. Sometimes it feels good to just let everything go. Inhale, look forward between the hands and now walk your feet with one step, switching the feet again. So right foot first, then left. Do flat back, shoulders towards the sky. Exhale, hands on each side of the feet. Forehead towards the shins. Inhale, stretch up, flat back. Chest leading the movement. Arms towards the sky, palms together. Exhale, bring the arms down. And namaskara. And then on each side of the body. Okay, let's repeat. Inhale, stretch the arms up. On each side, palms together, look up. Maybe doing a little back bend. Exhale, stretch the arms. Bend the upper body, chest proud. Arms on the floor on each side of the feet. 
forehead towards the shins. Inhale, flat back, shoulder blades together here. Exhale, plant the hands, this time jump, plank. Very good. <laughs> From here, let's just work on bringing the right knee towards the left elbow or tricep. Back into plank, let's do the opposite. Left knee to right tricep. Back into plank, let's switch it up. Again, right knee to left tricep. Left knee to right, to right tricep. Two more times. Right knee to left tricep. Left knee to right tricep. One last time. Right knee to left tricep. And then left knee to right tricep. Very good. Inhale here. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Roll the shoulders back, legs straight, tops of the feet only touching the mat. Exhale, tuck the toes. Downward facing dog. Excellent. Inhale, lift the right leg up, stretch it up. As you exhale, bring the right foot forward between the hands. Left heel down on the mat. Make sure that both of your hips are pushing so your left hip is pushing forward because we're going into warrior one. Inhale, come up. Arms and head at the same time. And as you exhale, let the hips fall down. So we're in warrior one here. Let's explore this posture. What you wanna have is your right thigh parallel to the mat as much as possible. The knee should never go beyond the right ankle. We're pushing both hips so that the hips are square as much as possible facing the front of our mat. Chest up. You can look up as well if you want to challenge your balance. Now the important thing is I don't want you to be sort of pushing your hips backward. I want you to have your hips forward. And if that's very difficult for you, maybe coming up a little bit higher so that you can have the proper alignment to begin with, okay? So hips pushing forward, suck the belly in, chest up, arms up. Inhale, stretch up, look up. Exhale, see if you can do maybe a slight back bend. Inhale, come back up again. Exhale, hands forward between the right foot. Exhale, back into plank. Inhale here, exhale, Chaturanga, arms 90 degrees. Inhale, push forward and up, upward facing dog, shoulders back and down. Exhale, tuck the toes, downward facing dog. Inhale, left foot stretch up towards the sky. On the exhale, bring the left foot forward between the hands, plant the right heel onto the mat. Again, square the hips. You're pushing your right hip forward this time. And arms and head together. On an inhale, come all the way up. So warrior one on the other side. Your back leg, your foot, ideally should be 45 degrees. That's very difficult. You can always open it, but never be on 90 degrees. Try to push your right hip forward as much as possible. Trying to square those hips. Front thigh parallel to the mat, your knee never beyond your ankle, and you're lifting through the arches of the feet. Belly button in, pushing the hips forward, stretching the arms up. Looking either forward or towards the sky to challenge your balance. Never bring your shoulders up, shoulders down. Pushing up towards the chest as if somebody was pulling you through a little rope here through your torso. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, maybe see if you can do slight back bend. Inhale, back up. Exhale, hands forward between the left foot. Bring the left foot back into plank. Inhale, exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, push forward and up. Shoulders back. Exhale, tuck the toes. Downward facing dog. Pushing that chest towards the ground, but really 
moving the shoulder blades away from one another. It's not about bringing the shoulder blades together. It's moving them away. Okay, I don't know if you can, if you notice that difference. Whereas if I'm bringing my shoulder blades together, I'm really open like this. You don't want that. You're creating compression in the shoulders. Very bad. So you want to open those shoulders and push in towards the back. So you're really pushing your torso towards your shins in reality. Inhale, look forward, bend the knees, see if you can jump forward between the hands, do nice flat back, shoulders up. This is a time to bring the shoulder blades together. Exhale, hands on the mat, forehead to the shins. Inhale, leading with the chest, come up with a flat back, arms all the way up, hips forward, maybe a slight back bend. Exhale, bring the hands down in Namaskara and the arms to each side. Okay, last one. Inhale, stretch these, those arms up. Push the hips forward, keeping the weight in the heels. Maybe doing a back bend as you're going all the way up, but always looking towards your thumbs. Exhale, stretch the arms out, back flat, hands on each side of the feet, forehead to the shins. Inhale, flat back, shoulder blades together. Exhale, plant the hands, jump into plank. Inhale, exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, push with the toes, body forward and up. Bring those shoulder blades back. Exhale, downward facing dog. Okay, so remember the work we did from plank, bringing the knees towards the opposite um, tricep. We're gonna do it from downward facing dog, okay? So the idea here is to transition from downward facing dog, but when you bring your knees forward, I want you to go into push up position, okay? So inhale, bring the right leg up. Exhale, bring the knee forward towards the chest, but then transition into push-up and bring your right knee towards your left tricep. Inhale, stretch all the way up the right leg. As you exhale, let's do it again. Right knee to the left tricep, okay? Three more times. Inhale, stretch back up. Three-legged downward dog. Exhale, push-up position. See how I'm bringing my shoulders above my wrist? Right knee to left tricep. Inhale, stretch up the right leg. Exhale, push-up position. Right knee to left tricep. I'm not sure if we did five, so let's just do one more. <laughs> right leg all the way up. Exhale, push-up position. Right knee to left tricep. And then you can just go back into downward facing dog. Now let's do the left leg. Inhale, left leg all the way up. Exhale, left knee to right tricep in push-up position. Inhale, stretch the left leg up, three-legged downward dog. Exhale, left knee to right tricep. Again, inhale. Very good. And on the exhale, left knee to right tricep. Twice more. Inhale, left leg up. Exhale, left knee to right tricep, bringing the shoulders directly over the wrist. Inhale, and last time, exhale, push up position, left knee to right tricep, and go back into downward facing dog. Super. <laughs> okay, let's go towards pigeon, as I was saying before. So inhale, stretch the right leg up. Now as you exhale, Go into push-up position, transition, but I want you to bring the right knee on the inside of your right wrist, like so. From here, you can go down. Oh, I forgot my block. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bad student. I'm telling you to bring your block close, and I didn't even do it myself. Okay, so your knee is just inside Right knee inside your right wrist. Now just start seeing if you can come back sitting down. However, without opening the hips. So if this is very difficult, by all means, feel free to use a block and just start exploring this way. I want you to have your left leg completely extended back. So no, you know, duck feet, your toes, the rest of your leg. 
So you can do so by using a block so that you can keep your, up, your upper body up higher. If you feel like you don't need the block, let it go and then just see if you can start bringing your right hip on the mat. Okay, and from here, let's start by planting those fingers on each side of the, at the height of your, your knee, let's say. And from here, I want you to just push your chest towards the sky. So you should definitely feel it in the psoas, which is in the front part of your left thigh. Okay, for me, definitely that's where the sensation hits the most. Okay, and so we're trying to like bring our upper body upwards, <laughs> perpendicular to the floor, which is very, um, it requires a lot, of, a lot of back strength to do that as well. If this is challenging enough for you, by all means, please stay here, okay? However, if you want to explore a little further, let's see where we can take this. So bend the left knee and see if you can grab your left foot from inside, okay? And you don't want to be tipping out too much. It's always good to tip out, you know, as you're grabbing your foot, but then bring the left hip back onto the mat, maybe touching your right heel, okay? Now from here, see if you can grab, start bringing maybe that elbow, your foot into your left elbow. And from this position, if you can easily let go of your right hand, see if you can bring it up and behind and maybe create an attachment, okay? So from here, always make sure you keep on pushing that left hip into your right heel, okay? And you're just looking straight or you can look front, see what feels better for you. And see if you can breathe naturally through the nose. If you can't, this is a sign you should be backing off, okay? So you always wanna be going towards your edge. Okay, so let's, go, let's get out of this posture gently. You always wanna to go to your edge, and the edge is dictated by your breath, basically. <coughs> if you can't breathe naturally through the nose, that means you should be doing less. Okay, the breath is the priority. We're gonna go forward with, with our upper body. So if, if you feel like you have that flexibility, you can maybe test the higher up you bring your ankle towards maybe like making an L shape with your right leg, the more challenging it's going to be, you know, as you go down. So the closer you keep your heel, heel to, your, to your hip, the easier it's gonna be. So from here, let's just explore right arm left arm down this may be sufficient for you today that's all good however if you can I want you to see if you can lie down completely on your stomach so this is definitely <laughs> money for the hips so you should be feeling it in the outer right hip here stretching the glutes really stretching that hip socket. And you're basically trying to close in the body onto the right leg. So check out if to see if your both your shoulders are parallel to the ground. Check your breath. Also check here if you're holding any unnecessary tension in your jaw. So relax your jaw. Let your tongue sort of relax away from your palate. Relax your forehead. So yoga is happening with the body, not with the face. And we tend to, if we don't, you know, pay attention to that. <laughs> it's like when you start mentioning, hey, am I contracting my face muscles? Yeah, like I'm super contracted in the face. So relax your face. Very good. Slowly, with your hands, walk back up. Bring your hands just below your shoulders. Maybe tuck in the toes, or not maybe, but tuck in the left toes. And as you inhale, I want you to just come back into downward facing dog, okay? 
And maybe take a minute here to just bend one knee at a time. And we're gonna go right ahead and do the left side, okay? So inhale, stretch the left leg all the way up. And on the exhale, go into push-up position and bring the knee just inside your left wrist this time. If you use the block on the other side, use it on this side as well. You're gonna notice there's always one side that's more challenging than the other. And that's fine, so we always need to respect our weaker side. So as you notice for me, this side it's like much difficult, much more difficult for me to stay standing up straight. But that's fine. <laughs> okay, so the idea is to go to your own personal edge and then breathe into the body and see where you can relax. So let's stay here a few seconds. And you might just want to stay here for today. If you did that on the other side, definitely stay here. And if you want to, let's explore. So let's bend that right knee, see if we can grab the right foot from behind. So you notice how I want to keep my hip in line with my knee. I don't want my knee to be coming out over here. So I want to keep it directly behind my hip. So always alignment before depth. And again, I'm just going to see if I can work my inner elbow into my right foot. And I'm always trying to push the hip towards my left uh, heel this time around. And from here, lift the left arm up and see if we can create an attachment. We're working the spine here, we're working the hips and this pigeon. Face relaxed. And then gently relax the right leg back. And let's prepare to move forward. So again, see up to where you can, you know, move your hip maybe, your heel, sorry, forward. And if you're keeping your heel next to your hip, that's fine. And from here, let's just slowly make our way onto our bellies or again, if you stopped sort of you know, on your forearms, on the other side, just do the same, okay? So we're always balancing on, out the body. That's why it's important to respect our weaker side because, and I would suggest if you're practicing alone, if you're ever doing stretching or trying these, these postures um, to kind of perfect and go in deeper, uh, stay in the posture double the time on your weaker side. So we're always like nurturing our weaker side. And there's a saying that goes, you know, you're only as strong as your weakest link. So that's why we need to take care. This is also valid in a group situation. How you take care of the people that struggle so that you're stronger together is very important because we're all interconnected. Just as in the body, everything is interconnected emotionally, mentally, physically, as I was mentioning before. So that's why we need to check out all of those components to ensure that we, we stay healthy in a holistic way. So from here, let's walk the hands back up, hands below the shoulders, tuck the right toes in, and on an exhale, back into downward facing dog. Take your time. <laughs> mm -hmm. And 
down gently. Let's just come onto the knees. We're gonna work into Gaumukhasana, so continuing to work the hips as we make our way into the last stretches on our mats. Bring your knees together and just cross your right knee in front of your left knee and then spread the heels apart. And from here, let's see if you can come back and sit between your heels. Again, please use your block, use a cushion if you don't have a block, use a pillow to create that elevation. If you feel like, whoa, this is too much. You only have one pair of knees, so be careful. <clears throat> However, these types of postures are very good for the knees, okay? So do them, even if you're only doing a little bit. Now, here, I want you to bring your heels as close as possible to your hips. If you are sitting down completely on the mat, they should be equal. So you should see them equally on each side of your hips, your knees stacked directly on top of one another. Okay. And from this posture, let's bring the left hand back. If, if you need to help your, yourself with the other hand so that you can bring the left hand as high as possible, the back side of your hand touching your back. And then on an inhale, bring your right hand up and see if you can grab your fingers. If you have like a strap or something that you can hold on to, you can also use that to sort of, if you can't touch your hands, to work your way towards that. If this is very, very intense for you, you can also just use your left hand to sort of bring your right elbow up and back. Okay, so there's always things that you can do, and this is not about hurting. Again, the shoulders can be very tight. You may have an injury in your shoulder, so respect that. And from this position, I want you to try to open the shoulders back. Always keep the chin to the chest and breathe. Let's let go. Let's come back onto all fours. Okay. Now cross the right knee behind the left knee. Again, separate the heels and make your way back down into seated position. And again, we're bringing, we're adjusting gently so that one day our feet are, you know, equally on each side of the hips. The knees, we want to aim to have a straight line perpendicular to the floor. And this time we're going to bring the right arm back. So for me, this is my weak side. So again, like I said, I'm helping myself. You can just do what you need to do to bring the hand as high as possible up between your shoulder blades. And then left arm up and see if you can create an attachment. I'm just breathing through the nose. Look straight ahead, face calm. And let gently, let's, uh, let's release. Time to shake things out. Let's come back onto all fours. And then let's just make our way onto our bellies. Okay. From this position, bring your elbows just below your um, shoulders so in sphinx so in this position in the sphinx you want to be imagining that you're rolling well try to do as best as you can actually so rolling the shoulders up and back so your shoulder blades are perpendicular to the floor so it's like as if you're bringing 
the lower part of your shoulder blades towards the front of the room and the upper part of your shoulder blade and your shoulder towards the back of the room. And you're pulling yourself with your forearm. This feels really good. From this posture, let's bend the right knee and see if with your right hand, you can grab your right foot. Okay, if this is enough for you, you can just stay here, bring the heel towards the thigh. If you're starting already to feel the stretch. If you feel it, you can go further. You see how I've, rather than having my thumb down, I've sort of flipped my hand and I'm pushing towards my foot, towards my, butt, my right bum <laughs> in this way. Okay. And with your left hand, maybe we can explore to see if you can also lift your left elbow off of the mat. So we're stretching the spine, stretching the thigh, stretching the hips. Take one last deep inhale. And as you exhale, bring the left elbow down, relax the right leg back, and let's come back into our sphinx. So we're imagining as though somebody is pulling us from our torso front and up, and you're rolling those shoulder blades, rotating those shoulder blades, as I was explaining earlier, to really get that stretch in the upper spine. So gaining the flexibility in the upper spine takes long. And um, depending on your body, your physiognomy, um, it can be more challenging and I understand that because for myself it's been challenging even though I've been practicing for several years. It's just taking <laughs> time and you have to embrace that. I mean, it's your body. So enjoy it. Enjoy it with its quirks and its challenges. Okay, let's do the other side you guys. So bend the right knee and see with your left hand if you can grab the foot and start bringing it in towards your left buttock. And again, if you can flip that hand um, to also be opening the shoulder at the same time, do so. And with your left, your right hand, see if you can push yourself off of the mat. And this is challenging to push yourself off. It looks simple, but <laughs> it's quite challenging. So if you're not able to do it today, don't worry. So stretching the thigh, the thorax, the shoulders, working in our right arm all at once. Take one last deep inhale, and on the exhale, bring the right elbow down, relax, left leg, and let's just bring our belly onto the mat and turn the head towards the right. Left ear on the mat. Well, let's turn to the other side. So right ear on the mat. Your arms are just to your sides, palm of your hands facing the ceiling. If you feel like your lower back is maybe, you know, strained a little bit, just bring your big toes together and let your heels fall apart. Very good. So from here, Gently, let's roll on to our backs. Let's do our last couple of stretches. So Pava Muktasana to begin with. So left, left leg completely extended. Bend your right knee, interlace your 10 fingers and grab your shin just below your right knee. 
Make sure both of your shoulder blades are touching the mat. Chin towards your chest. Inhale. And as you exhale, bring the right knee in towards the chest. Keeping the left leg extended, left foot flexed, pressing the shoulders against the mat, looking towards your belly button. Let's relax the right leg. Bring the left knee in. Again, 10 fingers interlace. Grab your shin just below your left knee. Right leg extended, right foot flexed as if you were standing. Shoulder blades towards the mat, chin towards the chest. Inhale. And as you exhale, bring the knee in towards your chest. So as you're pulling in towards your chest with your hands, your shoulders are away from your ears. Trying to bring your cervical spine onto the mat. That's why we're looking towards our navel, doing this posture. And gently let's exhale. And now let's bring both knees towards the chest, lower back onto the mat. Try to grab your elbows here if you can. How if you're, however, if you can't, it's not a problem. Just grab your forearms. Make sure your big toes are touching so that your feet, feet are equal, basically. Inhale. And as you exhale, pull those knees in towards the chest. Shoulders going towards the mat. And then with your lower spine, you're trying to unravel the spine, even the tailbone, all the way down onto the mat. Now, come all the way down onto the mat, just for a second to relax, let the blood flush through what we've just, the areas we've compressed in our thighs and our lower abdomen. Leave the left leg extended. Now bring the right knee towards the chest, and with your right hand, Grab the outside of your right foot. If you find that that's very challenging, you can also just grab your, your knee. Um, that's not a problem. So try grabbing the outside of your right foot with your right hand. And then, as you inhale, try to extend the right leg up, okay? So, I guess, you know, if you've seen my tutorial on the props, if you're having trouble reaching your foot with your hand, having a strap is really good um, because then you can be able to put the strap here on your foot and then just you know pull with your hands at this level here. And so using the props can really help you um, go further into a posture really. So if you can't, like I said, you can maybe just grab your calf or grab your, you know, just above your ankle. See if you can now grab your foot, your foot with both hands, okay? So the second part, what we're going to do is we're going to lift the upper body and see if we can go touch our shin, okay? So again, for those of you that, you know, maybe lack the flexibility, just grab your calf and see if you can bring it closer, okay? And let's just stay here for five, four, three, two, one, and come back all the way down. Now with your left hand, 
grab the outside of your right foot. Again, if that's not possible, just grab the outside of your knee. Bring your right arm out to the side so that your wrist is in a line with your shoulder. And then I just want you to let your upper body twist to the left, holding onto your leg if you can. And look to your right. I love the stretch because I feel like it really stretches all the way into the sciatica. So I'm looking towards my right, right leg stretch, stretching towards the left. Try to keep your shoulders as much as possible in contact with the ground, both of your shoulders, okay? Gently, you can come back up. Try to keep the contact between the hand and your foot as you're coming back up. And then just release. Bring the right leg down. Take a second here to feel the blood that's flushing through the right hip, the right leg. So good for the body. Okay, let's do the left side. <laughs> so with your left hand, bring your knee towards your chest and see if you can grab the outside of your left foot. As I said, just grab your calf, grab whatever you can, or if you have a strap handy, by all means use the strap. Inhale, and stretch, try to stretch the right, uh, the left leg up, sorry, all the way up. So maybe you can grab your foot, but you're having a hard time extending the leg, and that's, that's fine, that's where you are today. And so we're trying to get to bring, we're pulling, I'm pulling my shoulder towards the mat. Shoulders away from the ears. From here, try to grab your foot with both of your hands. Lift the upper body, the torso up, and try bringing the leg as close as possible, the shin towards your forehead. Now, wherever you are, let's stay here for five, four, three, Two, one, and release. And with your right hand, grab the outside of your left foot. Bring your left arm out with your wrist in line with your shoulder. And from here, let's pivot the lower body towards the right. Both shoulders in contact with the floor. And enjoying this twist. Now inhale, come all the way back up and release. And guess what, guys? It's time for Shavasana. So spread the feet about two feet apart, arms on each side of the body, palms towards the sky. Maybe you want to push yourself upwards towards your head to make sure that your shoulder blades are nice and relaxed away from your ears. Close your eyes. And relax.
gently, 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 everybody. Start moving your fingers, moving your toes. If you want to stretch your body, you can do that. And slowly turn over to your right side. Take a pause here. And then gently come, come back to seating position. Ah, does not feel great. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today. We're gonna see each other next week. If you have any questions, any comments, please leave them below. I will get back to you. If you like the video, press like. We'll meet each other, each other next week for another class. And from now until then, take care, everybody. Namaste.